angels, they don't accept the worship. Angels, if the angel of the Lord he is the angel of the Lord, he will never, never accept worship. To be bowed to, he will never accept that. And that's how the theophany, the appearance of the Godhead in form of human form is called the a theophany. And that's why Abraham, he knew out of the depth in the sacred place of our connection with God, we always know the voice of God and the voice of the enemy in his presence. So he bowed down. And he said, my Lord, remember, he is not saying my Lord. There are three, but he says, my Lord, one. Elohim my Lord if I have now found favor in your side my Lord if I have found favor do not pass on by your servant don't pass me don't pass me if I have found favor Lord don't pass me when you are visiting walking passing and going to other places do not pass me by pass me not by oh gentle what and then don't pass me by as you go around your errands of the day lord as you are visiting other people do not pass me by please just come for fellowship come come connect with me jesus connect with me god do not pass me by may it be a desire of your heart that god do not pass me by that when he is visiting to bless other people he was on his way going to look on sodom and gomorrah and the wickedness that were happening then abraham said oh as you go around your errands you are chose of the day. Don't pass me by. Just come in. Holy God, come in. That's what is happening. And he says, My Lord, if I have now found favor in your side, do not pass on by your servant. Please, let a little water be brought. He was generous. Generosity opens doors for favor. A generous man, a generous woman, it opens doors for favor to be bestowed. Abraham says, just relax for a while and let me prepare a little water. If I may have no meal, but water, water, water is life. Can I give you even just a glass of water? Generosity. Generosity. A heart of hospitality attracts favor attracts favor my little water let little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree just rest yourself sit with me under this tree i was sitting here just sit with me sit with me sit with me in, in this in this coolness of the day sit with me master just sit with me please would you mind to sit with me the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. He wants to sit with you. He wants to walk with you. He wants to sleep and be around you as he garrisons you around. He wants your fellowship. He wants your fellowship. And he came and said, do. They said, do as you have said. They said. Okay. Even before that, verse 5. And I will bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh your hearts after that remember he's talking about refresh your hearts so meaning three people but when he comes he says one lord just as we have three persons of the trinity but one god father son and the holy spirit he knew abraham was a man that walked in revelation and he says i will refresh your hearts after that you may pass by in as much as you have come to your servant that now you may continue with your errands then come over verse 18 come down as okay verse 17 
Then the man rose from there and looked towards Sodom and Abraham went with them. He was pushing them. He was walking with them. Escorting them. It is always courteous to allow a visitor to be escorted out of your house. At least. It's courtesy. So he escorts his visitors as they go to their errands. Hospitality always attracts God's favor. He escorts them. Then realize what he says. What he said. Verse 17. And the Lord said, remember, it's one now. The Lord. One. Not Lord. One. And it's in capital. The Lord Elohim. Lord. Master. God. He is here. Abraham notes that. The Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham? Remember, that's now the secret. The mystery of the secrets with the Lord. Shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? Can I hide from him really? Should I hide what I want to go? This mission to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Can I hide it from Abraham? This is here. Verse 17. Since, okay. Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. The Lord is saying, when Abraham has no no son, nothing. But he says, after all, this man is great. So can I hide my secret from him? Can, I, can the Lord say that of you, young man? Can the Lord say, can I, can I can he say of me? And so, looking at it, that he will become a mighty man. Through him, the nations will be blessed. Verse 19. For I have known him in order I have known the Lord. God knows his own. So he says here, I have known him. What has he known about Abraham? He says this. For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him that they may keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. Before he became even a father, the Lord knew that this man will instruct his children, that this man will teach his children, that this man will guide his family to righteousness. That this man will lead his wife. This man will lead his children. This man will lead his, his, his household, his workers towards righteousness. Number two, towards justice. And towards the fear of the Lord. Can God talk to, talk to people about you, young man? You are not married. You have no children. But can he look at your heart and ascertain that you are the one who is after righteousness? Because it's out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Righteousness. Can you stand for righteousness? Are you standing for justice? Do you stand for holiness? Do you stand for the Lord? So he says, I know this, this man. He will. And he will instruct. He will teach his household. Teaching his household. Men who are here. Do you teach your household? Do you teach your people the fear of the Lord? And righteousness? And truth? And justice? He talks about Abraham. And he says verse 20. And the Lord said, Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great. And because their sin is very grave. I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the outcry against it that has come to me. And if not, I will know. He wants to go to confirm about Sodom. Now, come over. I will jump to verse 26. So the Lord said, okay, not verse 26, for the sake of the context. 
The Lord is saying this. Then verse 22. Then the men turned away from there and went towards, uh, towards Sodom. But Abraham stood still before the Lord. He stood what? He stood still. Be still and know that I am the Lord. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be Father, may you heal someone to this. This moment, may you heal someone. May you touch someone. May you heal your people. They came in sick. I speak healing in Jesus' name. I decree by the stripes of Jesus, our Lord. May you be healed in Jesus' name. Abraham stood still. Verse 23. And Abraham came near. Remember? He came near who? The Lord. And he said, and he said, will you also, hear this, will you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? In Sodom and Gomorrah, Lord, you, you have talked your mind out to me. Will you also, you are going to destroy it, but will you destroy the righteous with the wicked people? Will, will you destroy without? Oh, will you destroy the people as you judge will you destroy the righteous also the wicked and verse 4, 24 suppose there were 50 righteous within the city will you also destroy the place and not spare it for the 50 righteous that were in it verse 25 hear this what is the 25? The Lord is saying, Far be it from you to do such a thing as this to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous should be as the wicked. Far be it from you, Lord. Abraham is saying, Intercession. This is intercession. He said, Lord, Lord you cannot destroy the, the, the righteous with the wicked. You cannot bring judgment and condemn. The Lord will deliver us from the impending judgment that is falling upon the earth. The judgment of the Lord is coming to the earth but the lord will spare his righteous he will spare you and me they have said that next year there will be a pandemic that has never been before may every mouth of wickedness be silenced in the name of jesus it shall come if it has to come but it shall never touch the righteous it shall never touch you it shall never touch me we shall leave they have said it. I know most of us, we are ignorant. We don't follow these things. But the Lord is here. Abraham is saying, you cannot do that, Lord. Shall not the judge of the earth do right? This is intercession. So, verse 26, so the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sake. Then Abraham continues to petition God to intercede. Suppose you find only 10. The Lord said, if I find ten, I will not destroy. And you know, there were not ten people found in Sodom and Gomorrah, except Lot and his family. They were not ten. There were fewer. But the Lord spared them. He spared them. You can read that story. Mm, he concludes it in verse 33. He says, He says, so the Lord went his way as soon as he had finished speaking with Abraham. 
And Abraham returned to his place. Pastor, what are you saying now? In few words by his grace. What is it all about, Pastor, today? Remember, this grace called favor. This grace called favor has keys to attract it. So today, amplifying on that part five of today, we are saying the keys to attracting God's favor. I started last, I shared about it last Sunday. So we are anointed for favor. And now we're saying there are keys, which I mentioned, some of those keys I mentioned last Sunday, I mentioned them and I said, there are certain things when we do, in not even doing per se, but even when we know, will attract God's favor upon us. And we said, last Sunday, we said, number one is alignment to God. We said it last Sunday. Number two, we said, is obedience to God. And number three, we also mentioned, and we say, is uprightness of heart. We mentioned about David being upright of heart. And God went fishing for him because he was upright, pure in the heart. Blessed are the pure in the heart. Uprightness of heart. We saw it. And now, some of the keys again is what we are talking today about. And I will focus on this one today. One key is seeking the Lord and prayer. Seeking the Lord and prayer. When you learn to be in his presence, when you learn to tarry in his presence, when you learn to hang around God, when you learn to hang around in his presence, when you learn to empty yourself, when you learn to open your heart to the Lord, when you learn to be genuine, true to the Lord in seeking his face not only seeking his hand when you learn to seek the face of the Lord without necessarily seeking his hand there are people that have been referred to as Beho Beho, Beho, Beho is saying Nipe, Nipe, Nipe give, 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 give we always, most times, our prayers are the prayers of Beho. Nipe. In somebody's translation, in this modern English and modern Kiswahili, Nipeko. Are people always who are after Nipeko to Nipeko, Nipeko, Nipeko? That attitude of seeking the hand of the Lord is not the epitome of seeking the Lord. No, 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 no. The question of being just on petitioning and requests, it is not the depth of our spirituality. It is on the periphery. We need to seek his face. Seeking the face of the Lord will just make you not only be asking give me give me a job give me a house give me a husband give me a wife give me children give me this and give me that a heart of worship is a heart of worshiping the lord and is a heart of seeking the lord of who he is and who he is rather than what he gives We need to grow beyond seeking his hand to seeking his face. We need to grow beyond the Nipeko thing. Please help me, give me, give me, give me. We need to grow beyond give me that, give me this, give me. And even if you don't give me, I will worship you. That's a heart of a seeker. A seeker after God. A seeker. A child of God who seeks after God will not just be on the periphery of give, but he will go beyond give to a seeking the heart of God. The Abraham type of intercession 
it moves beyond nipe nyumba nipe mke nipe mme nipe it goes beyond may god help you to go beyond where you have been no you can never say amen because prayer if you want to see prayer and the depth of the church you see it in the prayer closet prayer hour that's the problem where we are the Kenyan mentality, the church is the church of please give, please give, please give, and please give. But we need to grow beyond that and say, God, we are just seeking your face, Lord. Oh, not your hand necessarily, Lord. Even if the rains will not stop. But we have come to say thank you that you are aware of our circumstances. Even though we may not have that and have this. Oh, even though I may not be at my best. But I have come to say thank you, Lord. And just to say you are worthy. That's the heart of a seeker of God. Abraham had no child. Abraham sitting quietly. Meditating and communing with God seeking the Lord in Proverbs 8.35 to amplify this he says for whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord that's God in his wisdom personified if you find the Lord you find life some of us we are struggling in life because you have not found the Lord and you are not laying a grip on your God. You are giving God conditions. Being pushed there, pushed there and here with the situations around you, you are not seeking after the Lord. You want to be seduced to seek God? No, no way. A heart which is true for seeking the Lord and in worshiping the Lord in prayer, it will be, you will be seeking God. And when you do that, life and the conditions surrounding your life, they will realign in your favor. The problem is we, we just stop at the conditions that are surrounding us, but you don't want to go in depth and say, God, I raise a praise to you in my circumstances. I raise an altar of thanksgiving. We are free to go to that level. So, no job. Pray, you cry. He gives you a job. You are not found in his presence. You said, if you give me a husband, I will worship you and I will serve you. He gave you a husband. You have no idea. You want to misuse. You said when I will get the baby, I will always praise you. You've got babies, nothing, no heart of worship. You said if only you can bless me with this favor, that that tender, I may win it. He gave you the tender. You, have no, you are not seeking the Lord. In fact, you said if you can only give me some school fees for my children. He gave school fees. You are not seeking the Lord. What kind of a people are we? We are not God seekers. And we behave like the people in Jesus' days and of old who say, yeah, they have been fed and clothed. 5,000 being fed. Men. Then they turn around, they say, now, now do a miracle, another miracle to see that, to know that you are the Lord. They were not seekers of God. They were delighting in the supply. There are people here. If the Lord misses to bless you with money, you will not come to church. When he misses to bless you with a job, you will cease. You feel watch a car. And you keep even coming to church. But if he does not even answer a prayer that you made, you say this God and this church, I think they are not okay. This church, Ikai, Turn around. Change your heart. Change your mind. Seek the Lord for who he is, not for what he can give you. Abraham. 
was seeking the Lord. In Proverbs 8, 17, I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently find me. The Lord also bestows favor on those who love him and those who seek him and they are not those who just seek him. They seek him diligently. Diligence means they pursue him hard workingly. Seeking after the Lord. You are pursuing them in sunshine or rain season. You are pursuing him. If you want to see the depth of the church, let it rain. You will see people who are not going to church. Why? Because of rain. Very weird. You will see people who give excuses for not going to church, for not going to Bible study, for not going to prayer moment. Excuses, excuses. They are not seekers of God. Their hearts are calloused with the things of the world rather than being consumed with an ardent heart for God. May you never be that way. <coughs> May the Lord change you up today. May he find room in your heart. May he find room in your heart. Will you only pursue God when you are flowing in wealth and riches? It is known that even the wealthiest people and the wealthy people, they don't seek God. They begin making themselves gods. Proverbs 3, 3 to 4. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God. And man. Abraham found favor. Favor, he said, he confessed it himself. Favor, favor. He said, if I have found favor before you, Lord. Do not pass me by. Do not pass me by. Oh, may you find favor. May you find his favor. To a point of you saying, God, I know the favor of the Lord is upon me. Because I have found favor, you saved me. Do not pass me, Lord. Do not pass me by. Don't forsake me, Lord. Come near and raise an altar for him. Proverbs 8, 35 to 36. For whoever finds me, finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who fails to find me, injures himself. He injures himself. There are some of you, of you and some of us here. We have been injuring ourselves. Why? We are not seeking the Lord. So when you fail to seek the Lord, you are injuring yourself. You are hurting yourself. You are not hurting anyone. Hurting yourself. He says you if injure yourself. All who hate me, says the Lord. Love death. Ah. You hate the Lord. You are declaring you love death. Meaning death will come your way. Change. May God help us to turn around. That we will find favor. That we will flow in favor. That we will abide in his favor. Oh, Abraham found favor. Prayer and intercession he began. When we are seeking the Lord and praying and fellowshipping with him, he bestows his favor on you. He bestows his favor on us. May we be a congregation that seeks the Lord. May God turn around our fortunes in seeking him. Not just praying for land. Not just praying for buildings. Not pay, just praying for, for money. Not praying for cars. Not praying for children. Not praying for houses. May we, even in the midst of lack, we seek him. Even in the midst of our lacking, we can seek the Lord. And we can go in in his presence in prayer when we do that friends we are attracting his favor prayer is communion with God out of a pure and genuine heart prayer is communion Abraham was communing with God heart to heart heart to heart 
heart to heart he was communing with him communing with him this involved the aspect of asking for favor and also seeking God's favor and we need to realign ourselves even realigning our hearts that the Lord may bestow favor over us favor is sought how can we attract favor we attract favor by seeking the Lord and praying to the Lord we seek his favor in Mark 11 24 therefore I tell you whatever you ask in prayer believe that you have received it and it will be us he said in Romans 8 26 likewise we may not know how to pray but he said the spirit himself intercedes for us even in our weaknesses for we do not know what to pray for as we ought but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words you may lack words when you are seeking God in prayer but you can sit and begin thinking about God in prayer it is actually called meditation even when you lack the words to speak them out sit in the congregation of God's people and think not about your problems switch your mind to a verse a scripture and think about it that is you are seeking the face of the Lord I have no words but I can just be there thinking about the Lord not about my problems and troubles no seek the Lord when he may be found in Colossians he says continue Colossians 4 2 continue steadfastly in prayer being watchful in it with thanksgiving when you have nothing even to say words lacking begin thanking God for who he is for his character and for what he has done for you anything you can remember and if you feel he has done nothing good thank God for others thank God for your pastor thank God for the congregation of friends and, and, and the church thank God for the country thank God for the green that you are seeing thank God for the plenty of the waters we have experienced thank oh, allow thanksgiving in John 15 7 if you abide in me and my words abide in you ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you abiding in the Lord holding on his promises it is seeking his face we seek his face when we don't even know how to pray we allow him by doing the things we can do at best in that moment abiding in him Jeremiah 29 12 then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you you can seek the Lord and when you call upon him and come to pray he will hear us in Romans 12 12 rejoice in hope be patient in tribulation be constant in prayer prayer and intercession is key but prayer prayer being patient rejoicing in your hope you have that the Lord is on your side being patient in your hardships being patient being persevering in your hardships and constantly mobilizing out whatever is in their heart speak it out in Psalm 145 18 he says the Lord is near to all who call on him to all who call on him in truth being truthful authentic it gives you authenticity before the Lord from the depth of the heart God hears our prayer even from the depth of the heart in Jeremiah 33 3 he says call on me and to me and I will answer you and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known the way he revealed the truth and what he was going to do to Abraham is because Abraham was in communion connected with God and God said can I hide in the closet and in the public prayer moments like our congregation when you seek the Lord when you call on him he will reveal hidden things that you don't know we find favor of receiving new things in prayer and in seeking the Lord, we find revelations and insights of the kingdom and his treasure. First Timothy 2 8, I desire then that in every place the man shall pray, 
lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. Oh, men, men, men who are here. That you may be found in prayer a moment. That you may be found raising holy hands. Why holy? Because they knocked nobody. Why holy hands? Because they slapped nobody. Why holy hands? Because they never pitched somebody. Holy hands. When we learn men, men, men here, when we learn to do that, we find favor. Oh, is there anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. If you have nothing and you are suffering, you can praise. You can pray. You can actually sing any song. Spiritual songs are songs you have not known. But they come from the spirit of the heart. Seeking the Lord. 